Howdy, BFLO Bart here, and welcome. This stream is going to be more or less questions and answers, and, well, just some general screwing around, uh, playing with some different features and whatnot. So what I've done is I've created a blank project just for this stream. Um, it's not completely blank. This is actually usually utilizing my simple multiplayer Steam template, so that if there's anything cool that we're, we're making, then I can always just upload it and you guys can walk around and check it out so um, with that we'll go ahead and get stuck in the usual drink of choice orange crush and I want to thank everybody for watching the stream just started nobody's here yet but they will be all right so again just a quick run over of what my steam or my simple multiplayer steam template is uh, it's this. You hit play in standalone and it will come up and I don't have Steam running. So if I don't have Steam running then it will say go connect to Steam dummy. That's just was initially put in there uh, just for one person who always forgets to turn on Steam. <coughs> I won't mention any names. <coughs> Skippy. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and exit since I don't have Steam running, and I will turn on Steam. Updating Steam. Verifying installation. Hurry up and shut up so you can get the hell out of my way. Connecting to Steam account. So yes, it does use Steam functionality, and I will eventually at some point work on a non-Steam based multiplayer system. But since the game that I am working on is going to be put on to uh, Steam, that's why I've started developing this project. And Steam is the best outlet for most people to actually put their games on once they're they're going. So, yeah, I, that's why I went ahead and developed it for Steam. So, now that Steam is running in the background, you'll see that it has my username and avatar in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. It showed the little pop-up there for Steam Community and allows you to either play single player, just one click, bang, and off you go, or you can go to multiplayer and find a game that might be hosted. If nothing shows up immediately, you can click on the Find Lobby button. It will refresh, and as soon as it finds one, you'll have a join, you'll have the, the game name, and you'll have the ping. The ping will show up as 9999, because without a Steam app ID associated with the project, other than the development app ID that's put in here, which is 480, um, it cannot connect to a Steam server and actually give you a realistic ping. So that will just show up as four nines. Don't worry about it. That's normal. But if you want to host a game right now, it's just set up to just go right into it. You can just type in whatever name you want hit make and it will go into the initial multiplayer map. In this case, um, both single player and multiplayer go into an empty lobby map and that's it. There's nothing in here. You just got your normal character, run around, do your thing, and that's it. Hit the escape key and you can either resume game or you can go back to the main menu. And there you go. There's no settings or anything else in this menu system. That's something that could be added by the, the individual player. You can change this layout, you can change these buttons, change it however you want to. But once you actually get the template, which is only 20 bucks via PayPal, so it's well worth the money if you're wanting to get started and you need to have something to get your multiplayer game kickstarted into being able to, to host and join games. So, with that being said and done, you know, we have our lobby map, and for now, I'm going to edit on my lobby map. I don't normally do that, but I'm just going to go ahead and double-click on it, load that map, and without getting crazy, we'll just operate from here. So, one of the first things that I wanted to, to show off and, and actually make is I want to put a TV screen up here, and I want to have a video that plays in there. Um, I've shown this before in other videos. And it's one of those things where if you don't keep up with your skills, you're going to forget them, especially as you're getting older. Um, so with that, one of the first steps that I want to do is I'm actually going to have to, I'll take that off screen for now, figure out what videos you want to play. 
and my most of my videos are saved in MP4 format because I'm using you know the software that I use, which is Windows Movie Maker, for editing my videos. Just because. Um, let's see. I don't really know which video to put in here. I don't have a hell of a lot other than stuff that I've already done for YouTube. But the one that I'm. Thank you for the sub there, 70 VI. Welcome. So I'm going to grab a video. Um, i got a bunch of little videos here of like me shooting machine guns and different guns and stuff like that. So I'm just going to pick one of them that's relatively short. Well, that one's 24 seconds, 9.75 megabytes. That'll be good for a demonstration. It's a 960 by 544, but you know we can always change that format. Got these two videos here. Um, let's see what this one is. This is just some gun cam footage. Um, I built a gun camera and was testing it out. And it was a rainy day, so I said the hell with it. I went to the range and just was shooting water, cans, whatever the hell it was, was out there. The range was absolutely destroyed that day. So. Um, the other one... I think this was a rapid fire. Just for shits and grins. The weapon that I'm using at that point is um, custom AR-15 uh, 5.56. Eat a dick, Steam. I don't care what you want. So we'll actually do that one. Um, I should go ahead and that is an MP4 format. Doesn't matter the name of it for right now. The thing you're gonna want to do first off though is find your project you're working on. In my case, I'm in um, the default location. So under Libraries, Documents, My Documents, Unreal Projects, and then this one's called Stream Project. So what I want to do first off though is I want to go ahead and create a new folder. And I could do it in here or I could do it from Windows Explorer. But I'm going to do that one called Video. And we'll be in that one so we can look at it. But what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and now if I look at my content folder, I got one called video. I'm going to take that video and right click, drag it, let go, and copy here. So we can see that it's in there. However, if we look here, it's not showing up. And that's fine. Um, we just needed to have it in the project file. That way, if you are to going to extract it and upload this project somewhere, you'll want that in so that it gets packaged with the project. So, next thing we want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and right click and um, media. I am going to blunder through this a little bit um, because again, if you don't do this pretty regular, you kind of forget what you're doing. File media source and AR underscore video and I'm going to open that and it's going to ask for a file path. I'm going to click on the dots here and I'm actually going to go ahead and click on documents, my documents, Unreal projects, my stream project, content, video, and there. Now I've got it selected, hit save and I can close that. So now that one's actually linked. So I'm going to go ahead and create a media player and video output media texture asset. Check that. Click OK and AR MP for AR media uh, video. Um, you see, it created another thing right here, a texture, a media texture. We're going to need that as well. And if I go into that, I can look. The video is linked right here. I can double click on it. I'm actually going to select loop. Double click on it, and you can see there's the video playing right there. 
So you can actually pause it, and do whatever. You got controls up here. So let's do that. Let's hit save and close. So now you can see the the icon now is reflected for the video that's showing there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save all. Now I want a screen that we can look at over here. So there's a couple ways that I can actually do that, but I want to create um, a material out of that. Uh, yeah, that, that'll be fine for now. Now if I look at it, open up the file, this should be fine for right now. I'm not going to change anything on that just yet, but let's go ahead and create a, a screen, something we can we can view it on. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can apply it as a material or you can actually even build a blueprint around it, things of that nature. But the simple thing is this. I'm just going to come in here and instead of doing a cube, I'm going to do a BSP geometry. And the first one I'm going to create is I want to set this on zero so it's on the center of the screen or that wall there and I want the x-axis. I'm going to change everything here on my brush settings and never change it up here. So if you look right here you can see that x is going to be going this way. So I want to change my x to 20 so it makes it nice and thin and the Y which is this way I want to go ahead and make that um, 1080 let's go ahead and drag it up a little bit because we're going to resize the uh, the Z value which will be 1920 uh, wrong um, dyslexia love it 1920 by 1080. Okay, it's a little bit big. We didn't have to go that that big. So let's actually scale that down. Uh, what the hell is it? Uh, what is 720 resolution? Um, is it 960 by 720? What the hell is the damn resolution? Hell, I can't remember. Um, 720p resolution. 1280 by 720. Good enough. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to have a, a normal normalish aspect ratio we could have actually matched that to the video size which in this case was uh, let's see here 960 by 544 so let's actually let's do that 960 by 544 that's the actual resolution of the video not that it really matters a hell of a lot and the reason why I did a BSP geometry on this is I'm just gonna make it kind of a, a 3d look we're actually gonna go ahead and change this um, 960 plus 20 would be 980 yeah, that's, that's good. 980 by 564. Now I can actually take this and Control C, Control V to copy and paste. And then I want to go ahead and do the 960 by 544. That makes it a little bit smaller. Now I can actually take this. And I'm going to change this from additive to subtractive. And now we have a little three dimensional screen to look at. So we look at the selective viewport, walk over here, we can take a look at it. We can see that's lovely. We could even stand on the edge there. 
So material wise, um, I didn't put any materials on here because now I can select that face alone and I can actually apply a material to it. So technically I can go ahead and put that material on here and there you go. Now if I hit play, it's not going to do anything. It'll just have that white material, which is fine. That's our white screen. That's our, our video screen. So what we need to do now is tell it to play that. And we're going to have to do a audio media source as well because we're not going to have any sound. So we need to come in here and let's see. Let's try adding on to that. Let's see if we can do it. Um, uh, let's see if I can remember where to put the damn thing. Box brush. This is where it comes in handy, especially if you want to put something in a blueprint. It would actually be better. You could actually create a plane and stick it on there, and that would do what you want. Um, as it stands now, you could do blueprint, open level blueprint, and with this level blueprint, I can come in here and I can add new... Um, Nope, let me do it that way. Um, event, begin, play. And we want to be able to add in here a... Um, no, we're not going to cast to it. So, open, no. You know what? Screw it. I'm actually going to go ahead and do this in a blueprint. You can do it this way, but doing it in a blueprint allows you to actually be able to place it in any map. So you're not limiting yourself to just that. So if you go to blueprint, actor, and call this screen BP, open that up, and let's go ahead and add in a plane then I want to go ahead and rotate it to there and the size that we want this we can change that as we need to um, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll change that actually later so let's actually add a component of media sound. Damn it. Knocking shit over here. Well, let's still put it in there. So the media sound component. We need to add the media player there. It's going to be stereo, parent socket, we're not worried about. Um, we could set up attenuation if we needed to. That'll be handy later, but not going to worry about it for this particular map. And we're going to compile and save. But with this guy right here, we can actually change the, um, the material to the video material. And let's drag this to right here. So the material applied to the plane should be that guy. And let's add in the screen blueprint. And I'm not worried about it thus far. So let's actually take a look really quickly. So you can see there's our plane. And let's see what I'm forgetting here. PP screen, I got the media plane, media source. Oh, let's see here. 
Now we got the media sound, so let's actually go in here to our event graph, and on events begin plays where we need to. Um, let's take a look. We need to tell it to. Let's see. That's the audio component. Um, let's see here. We can activate, deactivate, set it, so we can change that as we need to. Now let's try. Um, I know it's not going to be play. Cast to media player. No. All right. So let's um open the level. No. Um. Let's see. Play. Set media player media sound. That's one thing there, but. It was play media or open media. Hang on a second. I set media sound, that's fine. So, um, get their media sound. And I know I'm forgetting something here. Um, go on audio. Audio. Hell, I've got a couple of videos on how to do this, and I forgot how to do it. Media sound. Probably need to go back and fix my uh, my media component because what's happening is this right here should show that video, and then the media sound component should actually automatically come in. So let's actually go ahead and rotate this guy around. And I'm just going to move it to zero. And let's go ahead and resize it. You can resize these, that's fine. Well, resize, asshole. Seriously? Okay, why are you doing it that way? And yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect for right now, guys. I just want to see if I can get the damn thing to work. So the video material, that's where I need to fix this. If you guys got questions about anything else, let me know. Because uh, like I said I was trying to remember how to do this myself, and absolutely just I was drawing a blank. And what really sucks is when you get old, you start forgetting shit. But then um, you end up having to go back and watch my own videos just to remember how I did something before. Because I need to make sure that this is actually playing that texture. And everything else is is there. The link to the video, everything is, is there. The media sound is fine. I have that in separately in the blueprint. Um, the media is there. I can I can actually play that. So you actually double click on it and show the video. View rotation I don't need to worry about right now. Um, so yeah, it should all be good to go. Alright, the video mat just turned black. And it should have been black the whole time. So then when we go into the actual scene, it should automatically start playing the damn thing. But there was actually a, um, 
a command that you should have to do in your blueprint on be begin play to tell it to begin playing um, media source and I'm just I don't know if there's something changed in 420 because ever since I've, I've gone to 420 everything has just been screwing with me so you know what I will experiment with this off camera I'm gonna go ahead and delete this shit you guys ask questions that's what I made this video stream for was for you guys to ask questions questions and answers but I have uh, another video where I show step-by-step -step how to make this uh, I will go back through it again myself <laughs> to refresh my own memory but um, I don't know if anything has changed between 419 and 420 so that may be the situation I know that at 419 you actually have to do these um, the file media source separately because sound is no longer linked with the video so you have to have that separately All right, so questions, questions, questions. But don't start getting questions and I'll go back to playing the crew or do something else. It's Lex Marks. How have you been, buddy? You know, I never did hate you. I just hated the fact that you, you pissed me off and you stabbed me in the back multiple times and started spreading lies about me. I don't, I don't deal with drama very well. That's why I ban people. But I don't hold grudges. So, you guys ask questions. I've been sick pretty much non stop for the last week. Um, sinus issues mostly, but the usual aches and pains. On top of that, I'm passing a kidney stone. And on top of that, I got a toothache, and uh, we're about to get hammered with a freaking hurricane. So, yeah, it's a hell of a week. So I want to get a, you know a stream done now because if this hurricane does hit us, we're liable to be out of power for a while. Right now seems to be fine in the stream. I get some people saying that they don't see the stream, but I already see it. It working fine just from just fine for me. Now let's go with doubling the steps and let's height. And like I said, I don't hold grudges. I never do. Angle of curve, step width, step height radius well the, the biggest complaint that I have was um, I, I gave you that asset pack at half price and whatever I mentioned that you, you, you paid in Canadian dollars and not in US dollars that short changed me I didn't get the full amount so that was the problem and yes it's only like a dollar or two but it's still whenever I mention it to you, you you kind of blew it off and like, ah, oh, screw you, you don't really deserve it anyway. And you guys know that my only income is from what I make from tips, donations, and from selling my simple multiplayer. That's that's all I get. It's all I have. I don't have any other income. I don't have uh, anything. So, tips, donations, and the sales of my simple multiplayer um, Steam template is all I got. So number of steps. Let's try this one at 30. So, I'm just screwing around here until you guys come up with some, some regular questions. So I know Ideal Studios had some questions and just waiting for him to pop in here. He's on Discord, but he's not in the stream right now. So while I'm doing this, let's make some invisible floating stairs. 
So you can put the stairs down like that and get it to look right and everything is cool. But, you know, what if you want invisible stairs or what I call blind stairs or floating stairs, whatever, so you can actually walk underneath the stairwell so you don't have this big, huge thing blocking everything. So all I got to do is just, I've made those stairs. So I'll actually find, so minimize all this stuff. My stairs here. Oh, um, remind me whenever, um, or remind me here shortly, and I will change your permissions to allow you back on there. I don't think you were banned. You should just be able to rejoin. So control C, Control V, so I can copy and paste, make a copy of this, and then I'm going to move it, and I'm going to move it just enough to where it looks like that. Then I'm going to change it to subtractive. And then what I want to do is I want to reduce the number of steps by one, so 39. So now, it's just that easy. You make floating stairs, and there you go. Now, if you wanted to, you could do that for all your stairs. You'll end up with two components. You'll have the stairs here, then you'll have the invisible ones underneath there. If that becomes a problem, and you want to combine the two together and make it into a static mesh that you can use anywhere. You can grab both of them, join them together. Now there's no materials applied to it, so that might be a problem. You might want to put a material on there. I don't have any materials in this project, so let me just quickly add one. Um, I'll just grab a texture Nope, wrong folder. And I'm just going to grab whatever. I'm just going to grab a brown sand. So I'm just going to drag that in there. I'm going to right click on it and create material. And that's good enough. Save all. Now, if I want to apply the material to this. Now, if I grab this, I clicked on any one of those faces. And. I can come over here and on texture. If I do that, um, if anybody is actually on my Discord, can link Ideal Studios the link to the live stream, so I don't actually have to go to YouTube myself and get it. <laughs> but if you're a subscriber you automatically get notifications whenever you're, um, I'm streaming so yeah if I try to apply this, this material here it's only going to put it on that one face and I don't want to so what I'll do is I'll select all adjacent surfaces by coming right here under geometry select select all adjacent surfaces uh, surfaces and um, now it'll say display two materials click on that and then click here and now all of them are going to be that color but if you look underneath here it didn't apply underneath there because linear stair brush right here is chopping off into the the guts of the stairs and that's why it's not showing the, the back side. So what I'm going to have to do with that one as well is I'll have to come in here and select a surface. It's going to select the surface on the invisible one or the subtractive one. So you can see there's no texture right here. So I'll select all adjacent surfaces and then apply that same texture there. Now it's going to paint the underneath as well. So now I can grab both of these combined by click and shift click to hold them there and underneath my brush settings and all this stuff all right let me um let me take a look and let me let me convert this to a static mesh and then i will i will get you on band in just a second
So underneath brush settings, click this little arrow to open this up and create static mesh. I'm just going to throw it in the video folder for right now and we're going to call this our stairs. Create static mesh and there we go. We just created it as a static mesh and it's there in the scene. But if we go in here and check out our new custom stairs that are turd color brown, there's no collision on it whatsoever. So we need to fix that. So we double click on the stairs here. And if we look at collision, simple collision, there's nothing. Um, if we look, if we uncheck simple and check complex, you can see that there is a complex collision allowed on it. So just come over here in your details panel, scroll down to collision complexity and use complex collision as simple and then save. playing a game with the, the video name. Um, did I... I thought I changed the name of it. Of the, the stream information. I may not have. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, I will fix that. Um, yeah, I was streaming earlier on The Crew 2, and I thought I went back in there and switched it. I was running back and forth to the bathroom, too, so... No, that's actually a mole. Um, yes, I've had that mole for many, many, many years. So I apologize for the um, the stream information being incorrect here. I'm not sure if it'll let me change it midstream here. Um, let me try. So let's see here. Go to Creator Studios. See if it will actually let me change it midstream. Um, probably not. Unreal Engine 4. Let me know if you guys see this thing updating. Q and A U E 4 stream. And let's change the name here. Yeah, I will shoot you in your penis. I hate Fortnite. It is a piece of shit game, and I won't get on my soapbox about it. So, yes, I really, really hate Fortnite. So, changes are being saved. You guys see the changes in the uh, description? <laughs> I'm trying to get everything refined. Um, the, the camera itself is courtesy of tips and donations, so everything should be good to go, right? You see the change of the, the video title and whatnot? Yeah, I, change, I, I used to have all kind of other stuff up here, and um, I do have, um, let's see if it'll work on, on here. Whenever I get a new subscriber, um, You'll see uh, it pop up right here in the screen uh, with the zombie. I haven't changed that yet. I need to change the animation. But when somebody actually goes through the um, the link below to make a donation, it actually doesn't change anything money-wise. But whenever... Um... Oh my god, I'm so excited. I wish I could wet my pen. Yeah, that'll show up if somebody makes a donation. That's actually a test of the, the widget, so... Someone didn't actually just donate, but that's what happens when somebody does donate, is that will happen. So, um... Uh, yeah, Lex, um, I will get you after this, um, the stream. I don't remember right off the top of my, my head for, um, for unbanning, but I will, will definitely get it done. So, um... Yeah, let me finish the stream, and I will get that done. So I can actually work on, you know, like features and, and helping people with stuff here, too. So that's our, our blind stairs. Um, so after setting the collision on it, now we actually have collision. So we can actually walk up and down. 
our new static mesh stairs and we can walk underneath it and now we have one component instead of uh, multiples. Goat right ahead brother. What you got? I'll go ahead and do a lighting build while waiting for you to ask. Because I hate seeing that little thing and I don't like turning it off because I'm weird. Seamless portal doorway. Um, you're talking about like setting up to where when you walk through the door frame, you actually teleport to another level or another, if you're level streaming, another coordinate in the level. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm not a, a, a Fortnite fan. Yes, here's the other thing is when you're doing these like that, the material sometimes get absolutely screwed up. See, it's, it's pitch black right now. Um, I do need to go back with that that ability to, to change that over. Um, smoothly, um, yeah, it depends on how you're doing it now. So I'll actually have to go back and reformat that. I don't worry about that. So to set up like a, a shits and grids, I'm going to go ahead and add in... Well, I don't need to. I'll just make a quick one. Um... Uh, BSP geometry. Let's go ahead and make it. Um, X of. Yeah, we'll screw it. 50. Um, now let's go ahead and leave it at 100 by 150 by 300. And then. Control C, Control V. Make that subtractive and change the size to it will leave it at one hundred by one thirty by two ninety. Just so we have a little little box here to create a portal in. You could if you wanted to, I imagine, but what you really need to do, I just want to have a, 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 something physical here to to put the thing into. Um, I would just go ahead and create, um, let's just save everything I got real quickly, and while I'm thinking about it, edit, editor preferences, and auto save, go away, I hate you, thank you. Um, create a blueprint. And should call this my portal. Now, if I wanted to go from level to level, um, it's going to be slower in the editor, but faster when you package it. If that makes any sense, because like with the um, the survival demo that I'm working on, it takes forever to load the map in here in the editor. But if you download that demo from Discord and You'll you'll see that when you actually are playing it, bam, the map loads almost instant. So it's going to be different in the actual packaged version versus this. So with the portal, I don't actually have another map. So let's actually save all. And map-wise, let's go ahead and we'll do file save current as uh, I played Fortnite once and then uninstalled it it just I don't like games that cater to general douchebaggery like the dark zone and um, well you got all the monetization that's just gonna happen but um, the dark zone and the div division I don't go in the dark zone general douchebaggery just annoys me we call this um, test map. So we now have two maps here. Um, so this is actually the test map. And I'm going to go back to the lobby map and delete all the extra junk here. I'll grab these and this. 
So lobby map still is the same nothingness back to an empty map and then test map is the one with all the goodies in it. So I'm going to actually grab these two guys and same thing here, create static mesh and I'm going to put this in here. Portal underscore box. So I'm going to do this as a level change, um, but I'm going to experiment also with um, doing it as a, I don't know, like a, yeah, teleporting the same level too. So I try to do it both ways. There's a way to do it correctly, and I need to, to look at it myself again because it's part of what I'm going to be doing on, on the survival one. Is some level streaming stuff, and so I can open up the size of the map instead of it being a little tiny map. I can make a, a large world. So I'm not worried about this all that much. And if I take this and put it in zero zero location, it's going to be in the center of the map. So now we got that zero zero location is good for us to work with, and we can also now go into our blueprint that we're working on and go into our portal. I'm going to grab this, throw it over here. I'm going to select the portal box, static mesh, go in here, add component, static mesh, and there's our box. So, um, you'll actually see whenever I get you unbanned from Discord, it says a survival game. and It's got um, building, you can actually make things, you can um, you got some crafting, you got weapons, food, drinks, things of that nature. So we want to add in a component of a box collision. And we want that box collision to fill up our little place here. Just enough to where we walk inside of it. So now with our box collision, we can actually go over here on component begin overlap and go to our event graph. The rest of the stuff up here we don't need. So we can get that out. On our on component begin overlap, other actor. This project it's going to be cast to player underscore base. So when our player on, and only our player walks in here. Um, we want something to happen at this point. Uh, we need to get our location here. Now if we want to open to a different map, I'm going to leave that right there. So if we want to just go from one map to another, then all we have to do is just drag off from here, open level, and then put the name of the map you want to go to. And I'll do it this way first, and then I'll come back and actually do it the other way. So we know that we're on the... What map? We're on test map. We want to go to the lobby map. If you can't remember the name of the map, find it in the file browser. Hit F2, Control C, and then click somewhere off of it. So you just copy and paste the other name. And then Control V, paste it in here. Compile, save. So now we hit play. We walk over here. And this isn't it. This is just the box. We didn't actually put the blueprint version in. So let's actually delete that one. And let's go to our blueprint, drop the blueprint in here. And I want to put that at 0, 0, and 280, I think is what we were at before. So now we'll come over here, walk through, and we're there. It's quick, it's not seamless. So I never did rebuild the lighting on this particular one. But now we could also go back over here to, um, if we want it to go the other way, and just set it up to where back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, then that's one thing. Because right now if we walk through here, we go to the other map. What if we wanted to use one blueprint to carry us back and forth? It's just as easy to create two portals. This would be a portal to X map, and the other one would be a portal to Y map. But you could actually set it up to where, um, in your player character, 
you can get the map name, set it as a variable, and then when you walk through the portal, if you're going from map 1 to map 2, you go back through here, you go from map 2 to map 1. Yeah, you could set it up whatever, but it's easier, the easy way is just to make two different portals. But let's actually um, grab a cube and let's go ahead and resize that. And I'm going to set it over here. That's good. Well, let's change it from 0 to, and 500. And okay. So now we go on the map. We've got a pad. So we want to teleport from here to the pad instead of teleporting from one map to the next. We want to go ahead and teleport from there to there. It could be anywhere on the map. You get the idea though. So this is where we want to teleport to. So we know that the position of that is at 0, 500, 140. We'll probably make it like 180 so that we land on top of it and fall to it. Um, I didn't mean to hit the, the full build key there. So instead of it, we're wanting to get the actor's location and we want to move the actor's location. Um, and if you do it incorrectly, you're going to end up moving the skeleton only and the rest of your shit's somewhere else and it looks like crap and doesn't work. So let's get rid of that. So I got a reference to our box location. And I'm probably going to screw this up the first couple of times here, but um, the whole point is to... Actor location. Set actor location. All right, so um, at this point, I'm getting a reference to the box is where the starting location is going to be. Yeah, you can do it both ways. So doing it this way allows you to teleport within the same map that you're on. So I haven't noticed where checking that box means does anything at all. So our new location, 000, 000 500 and Z of 160. Target is self. Um, probably going to have to change the target, but we'll, we'll see here. It's actually try linking that to here. So our new location is actually set here in new location. And okay, so let's see if that actually does it. So now we're walking around, we're in the map, and there we go. We just just teleported. Now, it doesn't stop the character, so as you're running, you're going to keep running at your new location. It doesn't matter which way you go through it's automatically going to face you the direction you were traveling there is going to keep on going. So now if you want this pad to be somewhere else um, you just tell it where you want it to be and you change that location. If I want to bring it over here to... Oh god it's super simple yeah. And I got it on the first try. I just made this shit up as I go along. Um, if I want it to be up here you know you get this value right here, 930, and you raise it up a little bit. Now, I don't really want it to go all the way up there, so because I might fall off the edge of the world. I know me. I've seen me do dumb shit like that. So I'm actually going to make this platform a little bit bigger. And we'll make it 5 by 5. So now we got this big platform up here. So where this can come in really handy is on things like side scrollers. This would be awesome. So 0, 750, and we'll say 950. So 0, 750, and what did I say, 950? Yeah, that's good. So now, as you're running around, do 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 boop, there you go. Um, that... It's possible. I've never tried to do anything like that. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is if you want some kind of effect inside that that box right there for your portal, 
Um, go to your viewport, and I'm going to add a component of a plane. If you want this one-sided only, then let's actually do a plane. Yeah, you would you would make it as a material, and you would set that material to actually be a camera, and whatever that camera is viewing is what you're going to see on that. Okay. You see what the hell I just selected right here. I am selecting this plane. I am selecting this right here. This will rotate it this way. But I just did it last time and it totally turned the wrong freaking axis. So if you were to use a plane, you're only going to have one side. It's a one-sided object. So you would have to, to duplicate that plane on both sides. So I would definitely want to make sure that this plane go down to collision and turn off collision. Compile and save. Because now if you go in here the plane is going to be one-sided. You can only see it from one direction. So you'd either have to duplicate it or if you're putting it up against a wall or something like that. So bang there you go and, and now you're able to teleport so if this teleporter since it is a actual standalone blueprint we can do whatever we want with it so I can go over here and I can put this against the wall its location doesn't have anything to do with the price of rice in China so I can put it right there hey look there's a portal to another dimension over here and doop, there you go. Just remember the the currently right now it's set to the direction that you enter the portal is the direction you're going to be going. If you want it to instead face you a different direction, then you're going to have to make some changes here. And if you look at your event graph, you get your new location. You're going to have to uh, make some changes to that. Uh, you know, you probably want to get the actual location and rotation. Uh, I'm sure there's a way of doing it, but to get back to the other part with the plane here, if you want that to actually show something, you want a material applied to it, and the material that you would want applied to it, let's actually create another blueprint yep you're, you're gonna set it as a render target actually so I'm gonna create another actor we're gonna call this our portal cam the the pirate game is all part of one overall theme Lex um, utilizing all the different Cinti Studios asset packs and you'll be able to go in and play pirates or sci-fi or whatever in various different game modes like survival, team deathmatch, deathmatch, uh, capture the flag, things of that nature. So you'll have all the different styles and you'll have all the different uh, game modes that I can come up with. So on our portal cam we want to add a component of a camera and let's start off with that and let's actually drag that into our scene here and since we want something well we can see the this will be good enough we can see what the camera sees here and we can see it right here so we know that it's seeing something so let's actually do it like that and like that so we have something we can look at it doesn't really matter the rotation and you can do whatever you want with with that camera so let's look at this and the camera we want to add a scene component or scene capture component 2d yeah I'm gonna need a lot of help here with this project so All right, Lex, I'll make sure that I get you um, unbanned from Discord um, as soon as I get done with the thing. So 
next time you get on, you'll be able to get in there. As long as I still have power, I'll be around because we're going to get hit by that hurricane. So take care. Good to see you again, buddy. So with this, we're going to scroll down from our scene capture component 2D. You've got texture target. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this box and select render target. I got you, buddy. I'll, I'll take care of it. And I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to go on my video folder. And I'm not going to bother changing the name. But you can name it whatever you want there. Yeah, it should be going a little bit farther north, and it shouldn't be much of a problem, but we'll see. So we've got our new texture render target 2D. If we open it up and look at it, you can see that it's all transparent here. Um, I'm going to hold off on making any changes to it just yet. But what I want to do is now that i got Portal Cam up, you can actually move it move the camera rather and then compile and save and sometimes it'll actually show up in here as well but what we want to do now is we want to and this is where it gets kind of goofy no problem buddy we'll see you is I'm going to right click on my new texture render target 2D and I'm going to create a material I'm not even bother changing the name of it right now. Now if we look, we go in here and we can see that it's it's there. We can see the scene, it's working, right? Save. Now I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna close this guy for right now. Um, so we see it's all there, it's working. Now if you add this to a widget, and that's actually a good way of doing it also but let's actually go in here and we got our plane grab our texture which is a material I want to scroll through here and it's a new texture render target 2d mat whatever you see it's it's crooked so now I'm gonna to have to go over here and rotate my plane and just resize it it's gonna be stretched and skewed and all kind of junk but you get the point I mean you can actually change that. No, this is actually going to show live video. And it's freaking upside down. Why did, I, why did you guys let me turn it upside down? Now you can actually go in here and... Um, this guy. And change its dimensions and tweak it back and forth so that it's actually gonna not be stretched and skewed you can have it just focused on a certain area I've got other videos on showing how to add a um, the 3d character to a map you can close everything down here just hit play and you look and there it is it's actually showing live video footage in that scene it, it's a little bit weird looking but it's actually live video if you look over there I don't know if you guys can see it or not but the little portal down there you can actually see my character moving so if there's somebody standing right here you can see what you're seeing in that portal is actual live footage of what's right here so I'm actually gonna go ahead and control C control V I'm gonna make a copy of it and I'm gonna move it over here so we can actually see it better and I'm going to go ahead and resize it. Oh, shit. Um, well, maybe I won't resize it. But now, if we go in here to play, we'll walk over here, go into the portal, and now if you look on the screen right there, it's a little bit weird looking on the texture because I need to do a build on it, but you can see live footage of what's actually going on on the other side of that portal. So if it's nighttime on the other side of the door, you'll see it. If there's somebody camping right here waiting to kill you as soon as you come in, you can see somebody, oh, I'm going to wait for the next sucker that comes to this portal. He won't know. And then I'll kill him and take all his junk. Oh, yeah, he'll know. 
So, there you go. Um, let's see if we can actually clean up the portal itself. The viewport, the plane. If you can see the other plane, you can see actually actively in the camera. <laughs> yeah, why would you need a two-hour video? I do two hours of streaming to get this, but whenever I do the Q&A sessions, if it's something that I can do right off the bat, man, bang, I can sit here and do this stuff, and you see it live and ask questions about it. But we just created, in that short amount of time, I... Um, Let's actually go ahead and do a lighting build. Um, a portal that you can place into your map. Um, we don't know yet about the, the hurricane. It looks like we're going to get the side of it, which is just about as bad as being in the middle of it. So we're probably going to see winds here probably in the neighborhood of 70, 75 mile an hour winds. So we're probably going to have some tree limbs snapping, things like that. So tomorrow I got to go outside and actually um, move my old Jeep around a little bit and see if I can keep it protected. See if I got enough dexterity to walk over here without falling off the world. Yep, walked right into it. So, so yep, now you have a portal you can place anywhere on your map to allow you to teleport to whatever location you want to teleport to. And it only took, what? five minutes to create all of it so what good is that what can you actually use it for you can use it for all kind of crap um, this house is old school brick it survived Hurricane Hugo which was a category 5 which is stronger than what the, this little blowjob is coming in so, yeah. It survived worse hurricanes, so... I don't know what what's causing the issue with the camera right there. You can see the, the video screen is actually kind of weird. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and also put that material. I'm just going to apply it to that. Um... Yikes. Yoinks. Uh, let's see here. Select it again. And you see that I've got multiples of it. I want to make that material actually spread out some. So let's actually scale it. 4x by 4x. And we'll, we'll try that. Um, let's actually try 5 no, let's try 10. And we'll do 5 here. Um, looks like it's overlapping a little bit, so... Let's try... Centering it up a little bit here. And we'll try 5.25. That's good enough. So I don't know why it's got that weird pixelation. You see how, how the, the image is weird? I don't know if that's something to do with playing in this, this, this mode or whatever. But I'm getting a weird pixelation on the screen there. See? Yay. The camera itself is right there in front of me. So yeah, I mean this this works, you know, it work single player, multiplayer, whatever else, because you know you've got your portal and like big, teleport you wherever you want. And if you want to really make it weird, um, you could actually uh, create two portals. Let, let's let's complicate shit. This was too easy. Let's make it even more complicated. So let's grab this guy. You see, the camera's gonna face towards that portal. 
I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. So we only got the one portal. So now if we look, we've got our one portal and we got the big screen over there showing what we got. So what if we want to add a second portal in? Yeah, you're more than welcome to join in our team because uh, I was planning on trying to get something together for Halloween anyway. Um, so I want to come up with something that's going to be spooky as shit. I don't want some little, oh, look. Oh, that's scary. Oh, yeah. No, I want something that you're going to need to wear fucking Depends. I want you risking peeing in your pants. Yes, yeah, so it's Beefalo Bart Gaming. So the same name as the, the Discord, so it's the name of the company. So let's complicate things. We've got this portal that takes us to up here. That's easy. And that's, that's good, right? Control-C, Control-V... So we're going to add a second platform in right over here. And let's look at our location. We'll do it at negative 500. So this one's at 750. So if we wanted to, we could do negative 750. So now we've got two identical um, landing pads up there. And when we go into our portal, it's only going to show the video for this one right here but we also have that location over there so what can we do to potentially put us there or here so it's a roll of a dice okay you go through this portal you could go somewhere naughty or somewhere nice so we're going to open up our portal and this is our location well we can have two locations Um, let's actually create a couple of variables. Good. And it is going to be a vector. And let's create another variable called bad. It's also a vector. So I'm going to hit compile and save. So now good. The good location is going to be 0, 0, 0. 750 and I think it was 950. Okay, compile and save. But bad is going to be 0, negative 750 and 950. Uh, the replication on it? Um, you know, we could we can find out. I will make a simple project, and I could actually delete some of the, the junk out of this one, and actually package this project, upload it, and we can test this out to see if it does replication and how it handles that. It should be fine, but we'll find out. So now we've got a good and a bad, and these are locations. These are vectors. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Okay, nice and simple. Let's do um, random integer in range. So we get a random integer in range, and we're going to have 1 and 2. We could do 0 and 1, whatever. But it's either going to pick between 1 or 2. And um, let's add in a branch. We'll put it in up here, in between. So, now what we want to do here is come off return value equal equal. If it is equal to one, then we'd go to here, and we need to. Uh, let's see. Hmm. From here, we want to probably create another variable. And portal, we'll just do that. We'll leave it as that. We're going to compile and save. 
and now what we want to do here is from true we want to set portal or whatever we named our variable into good so now we're grabbing the reference material from the good portal and we're setting our portal that we're going to teleport to is there and then we're going to set actor location to from here to here and it's going to take that information and just go on all the way through so now what we want to do is we can do this control C and control V and what we're going to do is grab a reference to bad plug it in here so now we can come from the faults node to here and we want to drag our player base to here so now if we um, well that's fine we can do it this way we could have also done the same thing is come off of here and do another equal equal and if it is equal to two then we go to another branch node and then go across that way but since we only have two options right now um, we're just going to do it this way so if it's equal to one then we're going to set our location to the good location if it's equal to, if it's not equal to one then it's going to send us to the bad location so let's see if that works so I'm going to walk over here and and it took us to the bad location cool so let's go over here and took us to bad took us to good see it's random so it could be either way we could either go good or bad shit that's three bad and one good <laughs> three and two let's see where it sends us this time and good so three and three that that works out pretty good so now we can have a random um, portal location so when you walk to your your portal then there you go it could be random you could go to a good location or a bad location it just it's completely random RNG for the win so I even tried to make it complicated and it's still easy as crap So what's next? What's next on the agenda here? Damn, it keeps sending me to bad every damn time. There we go. Finally got back to the good side. So you could do it that way. I mean, you could just, you can come up with as many as you freaking want to. You could have 1 to 575,612 if you want to put that many branch nodes in. If you want to add 3 or 4 or 5, you just keep changing this number right here. And then you just keep doing the equal equal and if it's equal to one do this if it's equal to two do that um, change the camera views with different locations um, that would entail having see I've got the portal cam here and it's drawing to a render target to there I would have to create another separate portal cam and this is my theory and if you want me to do it I'll try it I mean shit what the hell you know um, while I'm theorizing on what I'm actually gonna do with it let's do a lighting build um, the camera itself I could in, actually put in the same basic thing have two cameras in the same portal cam um, but with it being the fact that I've got it as a portal cam this is a blueprint by itself this is a, a complete blueprint actor and this can be used in any game mode you want um, this will look good in the, in the Halloween um, thing so just the same thing here where we're, we're doing our portal I'm actually going to go ahead and drag this over here drag this guy I'm going to select all this stuff here and now I don't really need to because that's actually the portal so we can close that um, yeah in theory what I would probably end up doing is adding in another portal cam um, 
just right click on it and duplicate and I'm going to change that to 2 so portal cam 2 and I'll add in portal cam 2 right here Um, everything whatever you're carrying goes with you so actually to, to make sure that we know that this is going to be totally different I'm actually going to go ahead and change the view around quite a bit so we know we can see a visual change this is camera one this is camera two so the same thing that we did here for um, this camera and that camera so what I'm going to have to do is go into Portal Cam 2, go to the Scene Capture Component 2D, scroll down, and on this one right here, I want to hit Clear, and then hit Render Target. Same folder, and I'm just going to give this a name, Cam 2. 2D, whatever, doesn't matter. So compile and save. That's going to create this. We need to turn that into a material. And save all. Now, here's the problem that we're going to run into. Is how do we get this view and this view? They're both looking at the same thing. That's just a, what we got. So if we look at cam 1 we can see the view it has cam 2 we see the view it has so let's actually go into our portal and do, 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 portal and our plane here actually is showing that one it is showing that material so that's not a problem oh this is gonna be super simple um, we'll just go over here events begin play and I want to get a reference to my plane and same thing we did on here we're gonna end up with um, I can actually just come over here and control C want to get a random integer in range and we can move this out of the way. We need a branch node. If it was equal to one, then what we want to do here is from the plane, we want to set material index zero because there's only one one material. And we want to set that material to now be the original camera. And from faults, we want to do the same thing. Control C, Control V. We want to connect plane to the target. Connect this to here. And we want to change that to cam 2. So compile and save. And if we hit play, you can see that the big screen right here is showing camera one. The portal is showing camera two. Every time you hit event begin play. So we can see camera one, camera two. Hit escape, hit play. We got camera one, camera two. Hit play, camera one, camera two. It, it's actually random. So, therefore you've got now you see right there it's camera one camera one that's inverted so it's camera one camera two it's going to be random on the portal each time it just keeps going to that one for some reason um, so if it's one we want it to go to here if it's not one we want it to go to there so it'll randomly pick between the two materials every time you hit begin play it just seems to keep going to 2 
And why does it keep going to two only? Is it broken or is it whatever? Now you're trying to get really complicated and make me think about what happens if you want to create a portal gun. You shoot a portal out and then run through it. That's a whole different ball game. Um, God, that sounds like a kick-ass freaking mechanic, though. Imagine having a portal gun, and um, love you too, buddy. But if you'd done it through the other way, then it would have shown up on the screen and it would have looked like this. Oh my God! I'm so excited! I wish I could wet my pants. So, um, yeah, imagine having a portal gun. I know there's a game called Portal and Portal 2, but as you're running around, and, and I'm thinking of old school games like Duke Nukem 3D. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, where you have, like, freeze rays and shrink rays and things like that. Those are cool, but imagine a portal gun where you're running around there. It's like a sticky bomb. You shoot another player with it, and... It freezes them in location and then teleports them to a random location somewhere in the world. It could be good. It could be bad. Um, so that sounds like fun, actually. But you want to shoot it out. Yeah, th th that's the whole thing, though, is with this portal here, I just created a little cheesy door frame right here and just slapped it in there. I mean, hell, I could come over here and add new feature and content pack, go to um, starter content, add the basic starter content to the package here, and then grab the prop door frame and pop it in there. And then could just make another room somewhere else with lighting and chairs and all that kind of stuff. So you see the room. It looks like you're getting ready to walk into another room. Um, I don't know why the, the video is flickering and looks weird. I'll have to look into that. But um, let it load the starter content really quickly. Come on. You can done it. Thank you very much. So let's say you grab props. You've got door frame here. I'm going to grab the door frame. I'm going to actually... Wait a minute. I'm going to go into my portal yeah the portal gun ought to be a <laughs> fun as hell um, <clears throat> it's probably going to have some replication on that one that we're going to have to deal with but so instead of this little portal box thingy right here that I made screw that guy we can throw that in the garbage if we want to and let's actually find the uh, door frame from the starter content there we go let's actually lower it down and then we'll take our box collision and let's scale that to fit and then we can actually make it thinner too so it, it stays within the door frame So we're at um, 0.5, let's make it at 0 0.25. So it's really thin inside there. And we'll grab our plane, let's size that up to... And so you can actually take that plane and go into your render target, and if you know the dimensions of what you're really working with, you can actually resize it. So now if I hit Compile and Save go in here and now you can see our portal looks like a door frame so I'm gonna drop it down to floor level so it looks like it's a regular door frame going somewhere else well I can't really look at it while I'm actually streaming so so now it looks like a regular door frame um, honestly you could even if you want to you can dress that up and actually put the door in there as well but that way you open up the door and then as soon as you step in it teleports you to the other room and if you want that other room to to be somewhere else so let's go over here on the other side of the wall and let's go ahead and 
add in geometry box let's go ahead and make it um, 20 tall let's make it 2,000 by 2,000 drop it over here so it doesn't matter the actual coordinates I'm just gonna put it somewhere where you know I know where I got my coordinates 3,000 no, nope, 3,000, 3,000, 0, 0, 0, and I'll actually use the teleport coordinate to actually be right over here. So the same thing with our cameras. It doesn't matter what camera is doing what. So we can actually get rid of this guy, and we'll grab camera 2, portal cam 2, and we're going to move it over here. So wherever you put it, is where it's going to show. You have control over that camera. So let's put it on zero. So now we could actually create a little temporary room. Go with um, architecture. I'm going to grab um, 400 by 400. Let's rotate it. Uh, the only reason why I would say put that in there, a door frame, is because you're coming through a door. And if there's lighting and there's shadows, then you want the shadow of that door to be seen in the camera. So let's actually move our camera over here and reset our rotation. And to here so it looks like you're actually looking inside the door and then we can just go ahead and make a room I'm not worried about making anything spectacular here just to get the point across but you build your room and make it however you want you know, since I'm using a lot of the Cindy Studio stuff, I'd have a lot more stuff to work with and a lot better to work with. Um, so now if you look at your camera, oh, we know that that wall's a little too high. Click back on our camera so we can see what's inside the room here. So now we can put um, a chair... A table and let's go ahead and put a nice little statue on the table well wow, got a little bit of latency there on dropping that in so now if we come back over here and look at our camera lovely we want to make that wall a bit more more prettier um, Let's see here. Why this folder is named Skippy? I don't know. Um, let's see here. Right click. Create material. It's lovely. So now I'm going to come over here, grab this wall, select my material, click here. Throw some custom wallpaper on the walls. So now if you look at the camera, it looks like a room. Well, i got to put a uh, texture on this floor here. So let's grab that and... Um, don't care. Let's give it that. So now if we hit play we look at our portal over here our portal is actually showing camera 2 right now and it's looking right into that room you change your camera position you change the size of what your render target looks like and you can actually make it look realistic so oh, I want to well shit where the hell did I go portal says I'm going over here but I went over there 
No, I want to go to that room. So you can have a false room. See, I didn't change my teleport coordinates. So let's actually... Um, what did I say? Zero, zero, oh, zero, three thousand. Um, oh, three thousand, zero, zero, zero. So I need to go back to my portal. And you can see I got all my, my stuff here. The good and the bad. So I want the bad is what I changed. I want to change this now to three thousand, zero, and one... 20. So I changed the, the bad location. I kept the good location because that's fine. It's still going to that our other location. And since we, we don't want to change our view anymore, we don't want to change our cameras. Um, if we don't want to change our cameras, we can get rid of this. Compile and save. So now the camera is only going to show camera 1 but let's make it show camera 2 the plane our viewport and let's change this to uh, what is our other one called um, video folder it was cam 2 mat so I'm going to select that right there go back to my portal click that and then compile and save now So we didn't change that. That one's still looking at the other camera. It's still using that camera up there. But this one right over here is actually showing the um, the camera that's in the little room. Like, oh, look, we can go to this room over here. Oh, well, shit. Teleported into the wall. Um, so let's look at that one more time. Nope, teleported the other one. So, I just need to change my teleport coordinates. It's off by a little bit. Um, go back into my portal. Bad. And let's do negative 250. And let's see how that, that works. Hey, look, fancy room. There we go. Now I'm in the fancy room and I can go about my business and do things and then I can do this and yay I'm dead so now our portal actually is facing into a room and now like I said we can fix the render target and it will look correct scale wise it's stretched out right now because of the way that I just quickly threw it together but just because our our doorway looks like it's going into the next room it's actually going to a trap or I can come over here and I go in there and it actually goes to the room that it was facing. So, you know, it's pretty cool. We can actually, if we want to, we can throw another portal in right here. Rotate it. So you can see that. And then let's put it on this wall. It'll work either side, but since we only have the material on one side, we only want it to show up on one. So, yep, there's our trap, and there's our real run. So, let's go out here, and hey, look, I can go to that room right there. And I went into that room, just went into it from the side. So, it's still going to be the same random, it's the same portal just randomly just keep throwing me in that same one there threw me the other one so now we can put that portal anywhere we want in our map and it's going to show that just we have it set to randomly carry us to that what if you want to change the odds what if you want it um, okay it's either a 50 50 chance between one or the other you could change this to five so it'll check between one and five but only if it hits one will it go to this location it goes to the good location but if it hits two three four or five then it'll carry you to the bad location or whatever super simple so I, 
Um, let me go ahead and do a quick lighting build and I will save this project and now what I can do here is I can either upload this project and we can test it around online and we can just two or three of us can get in here run back and forth through the portals and and just see how that works and if it does work we can then start talking about and planning the uh, the Halloween special so you're saying like um, if you walk over here and you're looking at this angle right here you're gonna see more to the left but if you look at it from this angle it'd be more to the right instead of a flat image um, I would assume that there is a way of doing that um, I would assume that if you want to get the angle of the camera um, you would probably be able to I need to move that over just a hair just because my OCD knows that there's a gap um, you get the forward vector of the player so we know that portal cam 2 is actually looking out the door there uh, I'm going to theorize on that and say that um, for the portal cam you're going to have to get a reference to the player character and um because all this is is just a camera and so therefore uh, might want something off of event tick um cast to now I'm actually going to try to do this as a custom event custom event cam angle you can portal anything you want now at this point so on our custom event we're going to cast to player underscore base uh, no asshole that's not what I told you to do cast to player underscore base um, okay here's the problem with that if it's single player this is no problem but if it's multiplayer who is it going to be looking after I would assume that you could probably set up a another box collision or a capsule collision and scale that out to where if there is a player within range of that door then it will then trigger this this effect we're gonna do here but as of right now I'm gonna set it up as a single player so let's get it working first if if possible I've never done this before I'm just making shit up so um, we want to get player character um, Let's see if we can change that. Um, uh, let's see. View angle sounds better. So we're gonna get um, custom event of view called view angle. We're gonna cast to the player base. As a player, we want to get forward vector of the follow camera the camera of which way are our characters actually looking with our camera and let's create a this is a vector so let's create a variable that is our cam output and we need to change that to a vector 
compile and save. So now we can have a, a zero 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 on that. Um, no, no. Um, of the follow camera. Um, either we want to get location and rotation. Um, get world rotation. And then we want to uh, change this to a transform. Compile and save. Cam output. Now we have all these. We got location, ro rotation, and scale. So um, we also want to get our camera rotation. Let's try to set this this value here, and from that we want to um, make transform. And plug in our rotation value there. This is probably not right. I'm, so I'm just making this shit up as I go along. So get a reference to our camera. And <laughs> we want to... Set rotation, no, um, set world rotation. So you guys are trying to challenge me, and I'm trying to come up with shit and make up stuff and figure it out as I go along. Um, the new rotation that we want is from our camera output. So I want cam output. Um, well, first off, we need to compile and save. We need to um, learn how to spell view angle. We need to, to run that. We need to run that event. We need to run this so that it's bam. It's going to check um, what our current is and it needs to update that's why we did it in, a, in a custom event so that it's checking every second to get that so we want to constantly refresh our update um, so the camera output we want to we have to get that to there so we need to break transform and get our rotation and set that there I don't have a clue if this is going to work or not. It seems logical. We're setting the rotation of the camera to what the camera output is based off of what the follow camera of the player is looking at. So I, I don't have a damn clue if this is going to work or not. This is just spitballing. So let's actually, this is all fine. We already got it set to look at camera two. So, screw it. Let's see what happens. Um, it's not changing, so... Portal Cam 2. Um, camera rotation. Our rotation is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, I don't know. I, I, I could probably sit here and, and um, well, yeah, for your, your situation, that might be good. But I like doing this shit for multiplayer, because for the Halloween event, I want it to be multiplayer. I want everything replicated to where you can shit your pants and your friends can watch you. 
So, um, on the events tick, we want to run this. Um, we want to run this view angle thing. Our view angle is going to get the angle of what our player is looking at. Um, yeah, the smoke coming out of my ears right now trying to figure this out would scare just about anybody. Um, what else do I need to work in here? We need to set the, the rotation of the camera that we got a reference to right here. Or do we need... Because the scene capture component is going to get what the camera sees. Um, I think. Um... Camera output is the output of the that we're looking for. This right here, this variable, is derived from here. So what's happening on event tick? Every second, it's going to run this view angle custom event, and what that does is it's going to ask the player. What are you looking at? What is your current rotation? Where is your face looking right now? Because if I got like get forward vector, it's just going to give me a, the vector of that. And um, if I break the vector, it's only going to give me my x, y, z values. So that's not going to help me. I needed the, the world rotation. I wanted to get um, or let's try um, what other rotations do I have I can get world or I can get socket so that was good we had um, that and that so we're, what we're doing is we're getting the camera's rotation that's not going to work either because um, we need to actually instead get a reference to our um, we want the camera boom I think get actor rotation might work so we're gonna break that and just leave it alone and just actually throw that in there so what we'll do is we'll get the actor rotation so it's still not updating I'm sure that th there is a way of doing it because um, I want to get the actual rotation of the player rotation and I want to update the actual camera's physical location or rotation. I don't know if I can do it this way. I'm going to actually have to probably... Because um, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm setting the rotation. Set world rotation. Um, let's actually try something different. And let's try. We want rotation. So, what we have to work with here is get socket rotation and get world rotation. Transform, get relative rotation. But that's not actually setting anything. Because right now, it's just getting, and it is a duplicated, because you see it's got the two dots right there, means it is replicated. So, getting the relative ro rotation here, I need to... I need to set that. I need to um, 
set relative rotation and from that uh, I guess it was the same thing right here was to break the transform and to get that rotation information from here and it's going to set that rotation based off of this information here but we have to make sure that we're setting this information correctly and I don't know if we are so yeah I'll work on this problem a little bit later um, but you know for right now the portal's working and I'm sure there is a way of doing it um, but I would definitely say it would be better to create a to where it's fixed until you get to a certain location and by having a capsule collision attached to the portal it's going to be fixed and then all of a sudden bam I walk into the radius and now as I'm walking around it changes the view so I can see through that door as if I'm actually looking through it I'll figure it out and if I do then I'll, I'll make a video based on that but the portal we know that once we go to that room we can actually go into that room now and it still has the the random thing to where it'll either carry us to the room or it'll carry us to um, our death and it keeps come on change up be different there we go and that big TV over there is still showing what's up here on this one so there you go there's your portals your teleports your cameras setting them up we're all lovely and again to be able to change it back and forth I'll figure it out but that gets you on the right right basis for working on it so now if anybody's actually looking through there this is showing what's actively in here so let's actually take this portal and I'm actually gonna move it so we can see it through there just so you can see that this is showing live video so we'll come over here and we'll stand inside this room and look out and we should be able to see it so now if we hit play we go through the portal now you can see we're in we're in the video oh no help me I'm stuck in this portal let me out <laughs> yeah you can um, simply I mean if you only want it to work from one side then it depends on how you're doing it here see if I walk through it this side I don't see the the portal I don't see anything it just looks like a door frame but if I walk through it I'm still gonna teleport but if you want to block the teleport from working to where you can only enter it from one side then that's a question I don't know um, honestly well see that's just a matter of variables when you ask it like that um, try to figure out the stopping it from going through this way um, honestly you could probably come up with a way of setting you know checking the 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 vector that way but what I would probably do is I would actually put a separate box collision in on this side so no matter what once I break that plane of that block box collision it's going to teleport me so if it comes in and works perfectly this way but now if I want to come through and I'm not looking where I was going there um, if I wanted to only go through one way then I would set another box collision and damn it would you go to the other room why are you gonna do this to me RNG quit screwing me Well, if you put a box collision on it this way, you could. Um, so let's look at the portal itself, and we've got our box. Our let's actually rename. Well, we know what we know what that one is. That's the normal normal way. So 
if we look at our viewport, if we walk through this way, it works like a portal. But we can set another box collision. See this box collision. So it's Control C, Control V. Oh, not two of them. No, as I'll get off there. Um, so now box one. So what I want to do here is I want to take the first box collision and I want to move it forward. Let's make it 0 0.1. Let's make it skinny. So now if we come in through this way, we see the door frame, bam, we're going to we're going to teleport. But now if we take it this way and do the same thing of 0.1, make it skinny, but it's on this side of the door. So if you're coming through this way, this is going to be stupid simple. So um, we know what happens when we need to do this one. So let's grab this one right here. Let's add event on component begin overlap. Same thing here. We want to cast to our player as Holomeo. You'd think I'd move my damn e-sig so I don't keep knocking the damn thing over when I go to my mouse. Um, so we're going to cast to our player and it's because our player is what's actually triggering it. And then what we're going to do here is we are going to get a reference of our our actual teleport box collision and we are going to deactivate it so now it's going to turn it off but we don't want it to stay off forever but you can destroy the portal I mean hell at that point then uh, whenever you go through the portal all you have to do is just type in destroy actor type that in as soon as you walk through the damn portal it disappears so I mean I can put that in anywhere but creating it as a one-way portal first let's go ahead and, and get that work and then we'll we'll set up a disposable portal um, so now we walk through our, our, our portal the other way and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and we've got this one right here that'll be a good test I'm actually going to go ahead and put another one in here just in case it teleports me up top Oh hell, we'll just throw it in the middle of the damn room. So we'll throw it in here. So we have an example where if we can walk through this way it works, walk through that way it doesn't. So we'll walk through this portal. We're going to tell it to deactivate the portal portion of it. We're going to just add in a delay. And we'll make that delay of two seconds. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and activate. So we walk through the wrong way, and it doesn't teleport us. It deactivates the teleportation, and then it allows us to get through, and it works. So let's actually come over here. Hey, look. There's a door frame. And it's still fucking teleporting me, you son of a bitch. I walk through the wrong way. It's still teleporting. Okay, um... Let's look here it's breaking the plane on both um, box one got to make sure it's definitely in the right place here um, and that's on the front we want that box to actually do something when you walk to it it's supposed to, it should deactivate it instead of actually allowing you to teleport so um, Well, if activate and deactivate did not work, there's other options we can work with. Um, let's try... Um, no, we want to mess with gravity. That has its own fun. Um, deactivate and reactivate usually works. Um, Well, hell, let's, um, try toggle active. Deactivate should have worked. Um, this
this is probably not going to work, but it's worth a shot. Um, you would think... Hey, Big, welcome back, buddy. You would think that this would actually get the damn job done here. Because we know that if we walk through the portal this way, we can see through, the camera shows us what's on the other side of the portal, and then there we go. Hey, it tricked us, we went to our death. But if we come over here, hey, there's a portal here. And walk. It's not supposed to teleport us, damn it. Okay. Um, so, toggle active didn't work. Deactivate didn't work. Um, I mean, set visibility is not going to be the thing because it's not really visible any damn way. You know, when you're setting your visibility. And being if you're you're definitely wanting to learn um, game stuff, then this is this is the right time to be here because I'm doing Q and A session. Um, we're working on a a portal system. For right now, it's just going to be. Oh, let's see, toggle visibility, toggle visibility. It's this is not what we want. Um, this is not going to work. Which means it'll probably work. No, okay. Usually whenever I, I do something that's supposed to be really simple, we, we want the damn thing to deactivate the, um, the actual portal. When the player steps through this box right here, we're triggering the event to make this box disappear. The other box. So it should be to um, well, that's no problem. That's 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 why you watch blueprints and Unreal Engine Four make things easier ninety nine percent of the time. <laughs> What? I did not mean to do that, you piece of shit. Go away. Um, I hit C first. So I want to deactivate that box collision. See, you got this right here. It's visible. Hidden in game. We're not worried about that. Um, there's no collision for sure. Um, because you want to be able to walk right through it. Box shape, you know, that's one thing, but, um, hell, I don't know. This is one of those things where, in theory, I'm doing it correctly. Because whenever I come over here, I want it to disable that box so that I don't teleport when I walk through the door frame. But we know that the the door frame is working and it's broadcasting live video so that we can actually see our character moving around the door frame there walk in teleports just fine but walk this way it's not so let's actually test something out really quickly since it's not cooperating um, let's actually dump that so if we walk through box one which is the backside it should not do anything whatsoever we don't want it to teleport us we don't want us to do anything so let's just go ahead and, and what we're mentioning before was destroy. I want to do something blatantly freaking obvious that I have just walked through that box collision. Um, I want to, to remove this whole damn thing from the map. So if I come over here, bank, the whole damn thing just went away. I'm like, well, what the hell? I can't come back. Where is it? I want to use that, that portal. So if you just want something to disappear, then... There you go. Destroy actor is your boy. Um, well, the question was uh, earlier how to make a portal and add some functionality to the portal. So what we did was we created a portal that, first off, just teleports you to a random location or to a, a specific location. And then we added the variable in what happens if you randomly, the portal just goes wrong and it teleports you to an area that, like up here, it would be a bad location and kill you. But as you can see, the the portal needed to show the room that you're trying to go to, so we set up a video camera to actually broadcast 
onto because you can see right here on this right here if I can get it to teleport me to the top if you look at the um, the big screen TV down there you can see us moving around on the uh, the big screen TV so we can see what the camera sees we can see what a static camera shows up as whereas this camera right here is actually showing this room here so the camera is right there in this doorway so if you look over my shoulder here you can see I'm there in the window in that door frame so that door frame that we see on the portal is actually showing real time what's on the other side of that door but what I'm trying to do here is set it up to where if I come through this way it's fine and it, it does a regular teleport but if I go through this way I want to do nothing to exaggerate the fact that my box collisions working to trigger the event I told to just delete the whole freaking door frame so I know that it works that box collision is working I could have it play a sound when I walk through I can have it do anything that I want but I want to make sure that it does not teleport me so the only way to really do this is to just teleport the player anyway but we don't want to teleport the player anywhere fancy we just want to go so what I want to do is I want to get my portal no actually I can get my portal box get a reference to that and what I want to do here is same thing we're doing up here we're set the actor location which is our teleport function set actor location is what we're doing the player is what we want to move our new location that we want to get is wherever this portal box is um, but we're gonna have to do some weird stuff here we want to get our get forward vector which is the the vector of which we're going through the actual portal and we're gonna have to do some some mathematics here so we're gonna get our portal box and with that we need to get a location for that to get world location so now it knows exactly where it is when the player stepped through it to trigger it so I'm gonna get that get my forward vector it's probably not the one I need um, my location is this so what I want to do is in fact I'm gonna hold off on this part I'm gonna start with it this way I'm gonna get this and see I'm gonna do vector which the vector is actually our, our XYZ coordinate of where we're going to go to so I want vector plus vector and what we want to do at that point is actually though we did want the um, get the forward vector of the mesh and Mm, shit. No, we can probably do it without that. Maybe. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the, the location of the box itself that we're in. So we got our world location here. We're going to get this vector. We're going to add... We want to add that forward vector. Because what is going to happen is when we have this portal when we walk through it we need to know that we're going this way our XYZ we need our X coordinate so we're gonna do our X this is not gonna work correctly because you are gonna have to get the reference to the um, the forward vector of the player but for now we want to increase our X location by 
50. So what we're doing here is get our world location. We're increasing our vector by 50. So this is not going to work because we don't have an accurate reference to the player's vector. So if we come over here and we hit it this way, it should teleport us past it. And it's not. It's being a pain in my nuts and just going the wrong way. All right, so you know what? I'll screw with this part later too because that, that's torquing my nuts. So let's dump that and dump that. We know that our portal works fine. Um, and the fact that if you, you want to make the portal only work one way, I will have to come up with a different way of, of doing that. You could do the teleport thing to where when you try to walk through it this way, it works normal. But if you come through it this way, it ignores your movement. I'll figure it out. I don't, I don't want to kick my ass. Um, but we have a working portal system. We know how to make it disappear once we go through it. Yeah, we can make that a challenge so somebody else can figure out so I don't have to. Um, free copy of the simple multiplayer template for the person that figures out the uh, the one-way portal door frame. You can use the, the portal. You can make just like we're doing here, which is the the starter pack prop door frame. Create a portal that has a plane on it. You don't have to worry about making the um, the video work like we did here. So if we look at it through this way, we don't see anything. But if we look through the door this way, we see through the room. And if we go through the portal this way, it teleports us to our new location. But if we go through the door frame this way, we don't want it to do anything. We don't want to teleport. I mean, literally, you could probably do like I was doing before, but by having a second box collision and doing a teleport and go from there. So, that's that. I gotta work on this too. The um, the stairs, whenever I made that as a static mesh, the material came out screwy. So if I come in here and the materials and bake materials um, opaque here, texture size, confirm Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's going to recompile shaders. Now, like I said, with this project right here, I can package this up, link this on Discord, and um, if we want here in a little bit, then we can test it together. And now we can look, we can see, we should be able to see what that, that that's all working. But here's the thing is, if we're in multiplayer together, and I walk through that door, then you guys should see me teleport. I should vanish. And if I get teleported up here, I want you guys to look up and be able to see me up here. You'll see on the camera. The camera is going to show whoever is there. It doesn't matter. It's just going to show the video from the invisible camera that's sitting right here facing this way. It's just going to record whatever. We should all see that. Same thing with the door. If I'm actually over here on the other side, or somebody is... If I'm on the other side of the door, thank you, and somebody's standing here, you want to be able to see it. Camera showing live video feed of what's on the other side of the door. Unless it, you walk through the portal and it sends you to hell, and you die. And just because I haven't added this feature in in, in anything in quite some time and it's just fun just one of those things I haven't put a launch pad in any of my games in quite a while so I'm going to do a new folder not new folder because I'm a dumbass delete that I want to do a new blueprint create an actor we're going to call this our spring pad I'm going to let this be the closeout for the video for right now. If you guys want me to stream more, let me know. But I need a break. It's been two hours. And you can hear my, my voice is getting crackly right now. So I'm going to add a component of a cube. We want to scale that to 0.1 on the Z height. And we'll do 2 by 2 
We're going to add a box collision. The spring pad, what we want it to do is when we step on it, we want to um, launch the player up into the air when we step on it. Let's actually go ahead and make that a point one also. This is stupid simple, okay? Very, 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 very simple. As soon as we step on this box collision, you're you're gonna be like if you haven't done this before, then okay, we got everything is clear on the event graph. I'm gonna select the box collision. I'm gonna right click, add event on component begin overlap so other actor is going to be the player um, in my case is the player base or a third person character or whatever your player is as player all we're going to do is launch character target is that launch velocity Okay, we want to change the Z height at this point to 500. Now, if you did the X and the Y, it's going to be moving in X and Y locations. But let's grab this, drag it over here, drag it up there. Let's close our portal for now. And let's go ahead and, and add in a spring pad. Right here is lovely. Step on the spring pad and gives you a little bump. Not enough, you say? No problem. Spring pad. Let's change that to 1500. No problem. Now, when we walk over it, it will blink. It'll launch us even further. So, if you're building something like a, a side scroller, you want to be able to, to launch a player up. Blink, there you go. Now, oh, you missed. Now you got to try it again. So if you want them to try to jump up to a certain ledge, there you go. No problem. If you want it to go away after it happens, you can just say destroy actor. If you want to launch them in a frickin' orbit, then you just add a few more zeros to that. And now the player comes over here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. What the hell? I am four miles into outer space. I can't even see my map anymore. So, um, that's a little bit excessive on the height, but I like, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, usually pretty good. Just gives the player a nice little boost so they can jump to another ledge somewhere else. Boink. Yes, you, you have to get the sound effect too. You have to say boink every time they do it. Or it just doesn't work. You gotta say boink. See? If you want to add sound to it, I mean, we got sounds. You know? They may not be appropriate sounds. Starter pack. Audio. We have sound attenuation. We start working on, on the, um, the, the Halloween project. Sound is going to be a very, very important aspect of it. Sound attenuation is going to be a very important thing, too. So we just want to go ahead and add the explosion. So we get the ex explosion cue. So when we do this, what we want to do here is... Um, yeah, we can just do it from right here. Uh, play sound at location. We want to get the location. We actually want to get a location. Um, so let's get um, a reference to our cube. Get world location. So there. We're going to play it at that location. We're going to play the explosion, but we need to come up with an attenuation setting. Sound we want is explosion cue. We don't have to worry about the attenuation here because there's already a sound cue involved. I can go to that sound cue and it's already got attenuation. That's logarithmic. You can set it to um, 
linear sphere shape you can change all kind of different stuff like um, the way that it actually plays the sound how it radiates whether it comes out in a cone shape or it comes out in a circular shape whatever so you can tailor that sound cue so now the only thing that's gonna do is it's gonna play that sound but if you're far enough away from that spring pad you're not gonna hear it oh sound is gonna be in, like the most important aspect of a haunted house if you did the haunted house with no sound it would be so boring but with the right sounds you're building that that crescendo you're building that that feeling that you're gonna try to instill if you want fear you need to build the right right situation and the audio is gonna be so important the lighting is gonna be so important timing of everything is gonna be so important um, I'll do like a, a full-on demo stream of setting effects in motion to trigger things just like we're we're doing right here when we, we actually walk we're walking across this it's playing an explosion sound and it's launching us in the air but it's no different that if it did not launch me and I just walk over here it triggers a sound if you do this just right you can you can have an eternal jump Now, the jump doesn't have to be this way. You can actually take this thing and you take that same um, spring pad and I'm going to put another one into the map. I'm going to rotate it up. You don't have to make the, the pad itself. It doesn't even have to be there. It can be invisible. It doesn't even have to be there at all. But what I'm doing is, is I'm putting it into the map so you, we can see it. Now if we walk over here and... It throws us up in the air but we could change instead of it having the Z we can have it throw us back this way or whatever we can have it throw us in whatever direction we tell it to throw it so you can actually they can be on the wall so as you're creeping through a little narrow area and all of a sudden BAM you get thrown this way you get thrown off the friggin map and down to your death so yeah so you gotta build jump scares you gotta build everything uh, let's see here I'm gonna get rid of those no, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna get rid of those stairs nope I'm not leave it the hell alone quit being a dumbass so we got our portal we got our jump box um, so yeah that that thing is in our spring pad we just we don't need that cube the only reason why I put that cube there is so we can physically see it in the map for demonstration purposes so let's save all. Um, this is good enough for just doing a random test. Now the thing is, I need to go ahead and look at maps. This is the map is called Test Map. Make this simple. I'm actually going to go ahead and close this. I am going to save current as my lobby map save overwrite and now it should change as a lobby map I'm going to actually dump the test map and I don't have to change anything so now if I come over here to my main menu map and this is gonna be what, what the the project's gonna look like I am going to play in standalone game so this is what the project's gonna look like after I pack it up and this is fully multiplayer so we can test it out and run around make sure that that portal works the way it's supposed to work so you can see steam functionality right here in upper right and lower right Got a multiplayer I'm gonna host a game and go into it and there we're on the map so now I can do the spring pad it works lovely um, portal is looking the correct way that camera is looking the other way come over here and it took us over here cool so now I'll walk through it this way and I'm back over here again it's still set to go random you bastard why are you giving me the same one every time really
There we go. <laughs> Finally. So we got another one right here, so we can use it to teleport back, and then teleport back, and then teleport back. You don't have to have it random. You can have it go to a specific location. I just chose it to be random, just to be different. So, um, all right, that or that, and then again, you can hit escape, go back to the main menu, and exit game if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and pack this up. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. Yoink. And on my F drive and new folder and portal test sounds lovely so I'm in that folder now and come back over here go to uh, no that's crap measures um, package project Windows 64 bit and I need to go to that folder that I created which was called portal test do 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 right here select folder and so everything else should be good um, okay so this error has come up and I like it I wanted to packaging failed and this is an error that I'm glad popped up because it should be relatively easy to fix. An item with the same key has already been added. Oh no, it's broke. Dismiss. So go to Edit, Project Settings, Project Settings, and Description, Project ID, Generate. And I just created a new one right there. So that's got a new key, and the project name is going to be Portal Test. Nope, I, that error is it's something that I wanted to happen. It doesn't always happen, but that's fine. That's great. Packaging, look through here, everything is lovely. So we want to make sure that nothing was in that folder. Still clear. Package project, Windows 64 bit. And try it again. Alright, so um it's got the same the same one. So I'm need to project settings. If just doing that key let's invalidate and then generate then save all save current um you probably could yeah you set a branch can teleport can't teleport or whatever um, or ignore and before you actually tell it to, to teleport but you want the first one, the the other one, in other words, to um, specifically say that um, can teleport equals no. So you could try it like that. I'm trying to force it to, to re revalidate the key. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and close the project and reopen it. Um, sometimes you have to do that. So what's happening is whenever you're cloning something else, if that continues to be a problem, you can actually come in here, which is also why I like to not use autosave. We've got a Steam project right here. I'm actually going to delete the video from that, so it'll cut down the file size. It's only seven and a half megs, but still. Um, and the content intermediate folder you don't need it. Um, it'll come back on its own anyway. There's also a build folder. So you don't really need you can get all this stuff right here in the build folder. Um, I know I'm just kinda of scrolling through this fast looking to see what's what here 
Um, yeah, this is old information. But still, the, the point of what's causing the issue, if you run into this issue when you're using, especially with my, my Steam multiplayer template, um, if you go to saved, I freaking hate that. So you can actually get rid of the save. I'm going to get rid of the saved. And I'm going to get rid of the intermediate folder. Because when you're cloning stuff, sometimes those become problematic. And then I'm going to go ahead and reopen the project. When you're cloning one project to, to do something, the other way to do it without having this issue, I guess, would be to extract it and then, well, now, I like my method better. So discovering my assets all over again, and that's no problem. So we'll just go in here, hit play, single player. It's not going to detect Steam when you play it in the uh, the regular viewport. So um, let's go ahead and try to do the package now. And I need to find my folder again because it's being a pain. We call this a portal test. So it should have its own new number now because I deleted all the other stuff and it should should generate the new number now. So I think we're good to go. But I like it whenever problems come up and I can actually show how to, to troubleshoot and fix that problem. Um, yeah, with that um, teleport thing, I would say probably you could potentially put in a variable there to say um, can teleport or equals yes or can teleport equals no set up a branch node so that it says um, it asks that question and if it's true do this if it's false do that then yeah if you can teleport then teleport if you can't teleport do nothing so so yeah that, that would potentially work probably could have put that in here before I packaged it and tested it out, but I are ready for a break. It's two and a half hours. Um, you guys keep active on Discord. I'm going to take a, probably about a know, ten minute break. Um, as soon as this gets done packaging, I will test it and then I will upload it and I will just link it directly in the public lobby. Um, big on if you're still there. Um, if you're not... I think you did join a Discord channel already. If not, you can check them out by Discord. And um, I've got the uh, the BBG demo page. You can check out the demos there of things that I put together. Um, so, I have to pick on you, Skippy. Um, with the hotel, all BSP geometries. All BSP. If so, did you do them correctly? So I don't have to yell at you? <laughs> There's a right way and a wrong way to do the BSP geometries. Hey, look, error. Lovely. Um, what is this error here? Um... Uh-huh. Yep, see? I told you. Um, unknown error. Lovely. I actually had this error a couple days ago. UBT error. Build failed because of unknown. Oh, let's see here. Was there any uh, errors that popped up up here? I'm not worried about the yellow. Map load file. Um, 
let me double check that as well. Log window NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1066 gig. Yes, I know what my video card is. Um, yeah, that's just unusual. <laughs> Welcome to Unreal Engine 4. Um, so apparently, UBT error, Unreal Build Tool um, error, it failed to produce the EXE file. And typically, when this is an issue, um, it's due to the fact that um, there is a new version of Visual Studio. I had to update my, my license on it. I'm just going to try one more time to, to do a, a build. And if it gives the same error again, I will check that. Um, but what happens is you have to go to Programs basically have to look for Visual Studio Installer. You're going to have to log in and check your Visual Studios. So let's actually see if it'll do that while I'm packaging. Once you run the Visual Studio Installer, then you have to look for, and it's going to take a, a bit to, to load, especially since I'm packaging right now. Um, Come on, load it up. Hopefully it'll auto log in because hell I have time. I can't remember my damn login information. Uh, getting things ready. Please update Visual Studio Installer before proceeding. So apparently there is a freaking update. So that may be why this shit's gonna fail again. See, you got that um, unknown error right there already. So, looks like it's going to fail again. Our build failed. Well, it, it's just finished. It doesn't always update the log, in other words. So, yeah, it, it started right here. So, this is the old information up top, and this is the new information. So, it's going to fail. So, I need to let it go ahead and fail so that I can uh, do the update. So it looks like that's what's happened is they decided to do an update to, to Visual Studio and since it's not, it's detecting, oh you need to update your shit, it's gonna break everything. Just like an NVIDIA driver. So let's let it run, do its thing here. And if it fails again, then that I think is gonna be the problem. It's cooking everything. It's compelling shaders, going through this whole thing here. You know what we ought to do for the Halloween and do a Halloween challenge. I think that would actually work out better because A, not only can we work on a project together um, for our team, but anybody and everybody else that wants to jump in, I'll do another video specifically about the challenge itself. Um, I don't know if it's going to fail or not. I hope it doesn't fail, but if it does, then I'll, I'll try the update. But I'll do another video as a um, a challenge. <laughs> See, all I did was I rebuilt it again, and it says build successful. So let's actually test that out. Let's go to the folder. It was portal test, and again, it creates a folder called Windows New um, No Editor. Freaking hate that shit. So I'm gonna move that to here and delete that and I can close that 
update. So, I'm going to say a Halloween challenge since it's 9 12. We've got over a month. You know, so you got plenty of time. Goody. Okay, so Visual Studio install. I'm going to go ahead and, and update this as well. But let's quickly look before it starts destroying my freaking frame rate. Let's run the project. Yes, allow access. I created a damn thing. I'm pretty sure it's it's okay. Multiplayer host make. If you're just doing a quick test, you don't actually have to put anything in the name of the other thing. So again, I don't know why I'm getting that freaking weird speckling on that camera, but it doesn't seem to be doing it on this camera. So that's done. Be good enough for testing, just for testing those features out. And don't fall off the damn edge, Skippy. There is no respawn. You fall off, you're just screwed. I didn't put a damn um, in blocking volumes or anything else in. So, it works. So I'm going to go ahead and zip that up, or package that up. Add to portal test RAR, and let it run. Check on this. It is just about done downloading. You are one of the ones that I can guarantee that I, if I don't put a freaking um, a blocking volume in to keep people from falling off the damn planet, you'll find a way. I don't know how you don't fall off the planet walking around Earth now. Thank God there's gravity in the real world that prevents that from happening. Um, all right. Well, it's um, it's done zipping up. I am installing my Visual Studio installer so it can restart. But I want to show also how you go about checking your Visual Studio. Because if you don't have Visual Studio installed correctly and running correctly, then you can't package your projects. So that was one of my major issues that I was having. And it wasn't um, an issue of 419. I could have kept 419. So once it's all up, setup completed with warnings and let's see what the problem is couldn't install SQL SY little, little, whatever the hell um, yeah I don't care so I'm not worried about it I, I'll come back to this later so with this portal test what I'm gonna do is Find it in here. Portal test. Oh my god, it's 135 megabytes. Holy crap. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the stream right now. I will take a quick break while this is uploading. And then we will test this and go into a voice room on the Discord channel. I got a few things I got to straighten up on Discord. And then, yep, we'll hop in here and play some multiplayer and check that portal system out on the multiplayer. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the upload. Open up this and this. Because I know very good and well that uploading a, f a file and streaming at the same time is not going to work very well. So, I want to thank everybody for stopping in and watching. And keep an eye on Discord. I will let you know whenever it's ready. I'll post a link in there, and we'll just jump in there, and we'll test this out together. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you soon.